of 19, Tim Molnar was a diligent student pursuing aeronautical mechanics at Embry-Riddle Aeronautical University in Daytona Beach, Florida. However, on January 24, 1984, his life took an unexpected turn. Departing from home to attend his classes, he mysteriously vanished and never returned. The last person to see him was his younger brother, Frank, whom he dropped off at school that morning. The circumstances surrounding his disappearance have left investigators and his family perplexed, leading to conflicting theories. Some believe that foul play may have been involved in Tim's disappearance, while others, including his family, hold on to the hope that he chose to run away to start a new life. The night after his vanishing, his family received an eerie phone call with nothing but static on the other end, possibly an attempt from Tim to reach out, but hesitated and hung up. The investigation took a surprising turn two weeks later when it was discovered that Tim had stopped at a gas station in Lake City, Florida, on the day he went missing, using his parents' credit card to pay for gas. The gas station attendant confirmed he was alone, adding to the mystery. Four months later, a letter from an auto impound company in Atlanta, Georgia, revealed that Tim's car had been found in a parking lot just one block away from the Greyhound bus terminal, where he left it six days after vanishing. Inside the abandoned car, his family discovered his driver's license, wallet, credit card, and other personal items. However, some valuable items were missing, such as a stereo, an expensive tool set, and a bicycle. The absence of clothes, except those he was wearing, indicated that he might have changed his identity. Additionally, he had withdrawn almost all the money from his savings account before disappearing. The case remained unresolved for over a decade until it resurfaced on an episode of Unsolved Mysteries aired on November 17, 1995. A viewer named Stephen Cull came forward, recognizing the clothes found with the body of a person frozen in ice in a secluded woodlot in Neosho, Wisconsin. The discovery had been made ten years prior. The medical examiner was alerted and DNA testing confirmed that the body was indeed Tim's. Keys found with the body matched the locks of the Molnar home. Oddly, the cause of his death remain unknown, as there were no apparent signs of trauma, and the reasons for his presence in Wisconsin remain a mystery. Despite the resolution of his identity, the circumstances surrounding Tim's death continued to perplex everyone involved. His family organized a memorial service and laid him to rest in Daytona Beach, Florida, where he had disappeared years ago. However, the unanswered questions left by his vanishing remain to this day, forever shrouding his fate in uncertainty. Tragically, Tim's parents, Helen and Michael, have since passed away, adding to the sadness that lingers around this case. During my research for this video, I stumbled upon a fascinating Reddit post titled, I have information on the disappearance of Tim Molnar, which had been posted approximately 10 months ago. In the post, a user claimed that their parents had encountered a peculiar family friend on their property. This individual, now in his 80s, used to show up uninvited to their family property, which happened to be located just down the street from where Tim Molnar was eventually found in Wisconsin. The Reddit user went on to explain that they had reported this crucial information to the FBI, hoping it could shed light on the case. But as of yet, no significant developments had resulted from their report. The mysterious connection between the family friend's presence near the location of Tim's discovery adds an intriguing twist to the already puzzling disappearance of Tim Molnar. Tim Molnar's story is one that reminds us of the enduring impact of unresolved mysteries and the enduring love of a family that sought answers for decades. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Fireside Unsolved. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to help the channel grow. Until next time, take it easy and be easy, you filthy bastards.